Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about peach trees. That's right, growing peach trees in the south. This particular tree is going to impress you, so stick around. I'm going to explain quite a bit of information here on growing peach trees in Florida and in other southern states. All right, so let's talk a little bit about peach trees in general and specifically uh, how they normally produce the flowers, what time of year they do that, okay? And subsequently, uh, the fruit that comes after the flowers have been pollinated. So these are low chill peach trees. This, this particular tree is growing in a container. I'll show you the container in just a few minutes. And the second year, it did not actually produce any flowers, which kind of bummed me out because it's a hundred chill hour tree. This one's called Florida Grand. And I was really surprised, and they, they do need like 45 degrees or less, and then this gives it sufficient 100 hours so that the tree is kind of um, stimulated, uh, stressed enough that it decides that it's gonna flower and set some fruit. So what I did is, two things that, that we're gonna talk about, and the first thing that I did is, um, about, it was probably about a little less than a month ago, I, I kind of said to myself, you know what? It's got lots of leaves, it's looking healthy. Let me defoliate it. And if you don't know what defoliate, most of you will know, but defoliate means to remove all of the leaves. So I took all the leaves off the tree by hand, all of them, and I waited. And what I noticed about two weeks ago was it had these, these interesting flower buds that started to develop, okay? And there's a little bit of a difference between a flower bud and a leaf bud. And I, I can't really explain it to you, you gotta kinda see it. But in any event, these, these are smaller, newer branches, right? So these are younger branches, new growth. This is relatively new growth. So typically what happens is in the spring, your tree comes out of dormancy and then the leaves begin to develop and then the flower buds begin to initiate growth and they stimulate themselves. They start coming open and then you end up with your fruit. So what I did this time was by defoliating the tree, it, believe me, it wasn't 45 degrees for any length of time and because um, that was only a month ago and that would have been uh, September. So now it's the 17th of October and I believe that by removing all the leaves, okay, also gave it a lot of extra uh, phosphorus and potassium, very little nitrogen. I've been giving this tree very little nitrogen, but I gave it a ton of phosphorus and a ton of potassium on a regular basis, okay? So maybe that has something to do with it. Uh, but normally, like I said, uh, the tree will produce the flowers on the newer growth and the leaves come later so if you notice this branch has no leaves this branch has the flowers and just one little leaf back here and uh, as I go around the tree I'll point that out the new growth here's another one right so this new growth has leaves but it also has a flower that's coming out and they're all very young branches so it's important to make sure that when you buy a peach tree that two things, number one, that you get one that is a low chill. The lower the chill, the better. Even though I didn't get any fruit, it was kind of a weird thing, I don't know why that happened. But I do have something going on now. I've got the flowers and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this tree is gonna leave me with some nice peaches. And Florida Grand is the variety, it's called Florida Grand. It's a very nice, tasty peach from the University of Florida. And if you're in the southern states of the United States, um, and it gets really, really hot, and you want to get a peach tree, get something like this. There's other ones too. There's Florida Prince. I believe there's Tropic Snow. There's uh, UF Sun. There's quite a few different peach trees. But this one so far is the lowest one that I'm aware of. I think there might be another one, but I can't remember. But this one is called Florida Grand. Produces uh, very nice little blossoms, and we shall see if we get fruit. Now, when I come back, I'm going to talk to you about one other thing that's really cool. So don't leave. Stick around. All right, so here's what I was going to talk to you guys about. When, when you buy many of these uh, different fruit trees, one of the things that you need to be aware of is the tree is susceptible to nematodes. And, and that goes... So if you're going to grow a peach tree, it's important to make sure that you have one that's nematode resistant because there are many places, uh, especially places with sandy soil, that are very, very um, problematic because of the nematodes. So nematodes are microscopic, let's just call them little microscopic worms that go into the roots and cause all kinds of problems. Uh, look up um, uh, root knot nematodes and you'll know what I'm talking about. But they will damage the roots of the trees and cause them to decline rapidly, uh, not able to absorb nutrients and so on. So 
the peach trees that are available in Florida are normally grafted on Nemagard, and I think there's another one called Florida Guard. Now, what I did to this tree is I wanted to see if I could promote the tree to actually produce some of its new suckers to come out from the base of the tree. Now, normally you don't do that because you don't want suckers, okay? But I wanted suckers on this tree because I wanted to see if I could then take these branches that you see me touching here like this and actually air layer this branch and now have my own nematode resistant rootstock so that I could then graft onto it or better yet, get this thing growing by an air layer and start getting the fruit to develop on this tree and then take those seeds and hopefully those seeds will be just the same as its parents and I might have nematode resistant rootstock. Just a thought, haven't really looked into it that deeply. If you know more about nematode resistant peach rootstocks and how they're grown or how they're developed, share that with us here. Leave some, some comments below. Um, so how did I get the, the suckers? Normally they don't sucker. I've, I've yet to see a peach tree sucker. I mean, it could be just me got lucky. Maybe you've had a peach tree and it suckers a lot. Um, but this one is on Nemagard, and I have not ever seen it sucker until I did the following, okay? And I'm going to turn this around to show you what I did is there was a nice thick root right here on the surface, just below the surface actually. And I decided to sever that root. So I cut the root here, I separated it, I left it up, and I separated it. And about, I would say it took about three months. Three months later, I started getting this shoot. You see how big it is now. I got this shoot to develop, and I'm gonna let this shoot develop, and I'm gonna air layer like I said earlier, so that I can grow my own, hopefully, nematode resistant rootstock. Um, now, this could be patented and I need to ch check into that because I don't want to break any laws and, and do something that I'm not supposed to be doing. So, if you, like I said, if you're familiar with nematode resistant rootstocks or, or rootstocks in general, uh, if there's any kind of a patent on this thing, it's called Nemagard and the other one's called Florida Guard, go ahead and share that with us as well. So, again, I cut it down here and shortly after cutting it a couple of months later, I started getting these little, and here's another one down here, here's another one down here, there's another one in the back. And, and, and the reason that it's important that you understand this is because uh, most of the time you don't want this, right? Because this will actually grow faster than your scion. Your scion is the piece, which is right here, which is the Florida variety, in this case, the Florida Grand. So this is the one that produces great peaches, low chill, and this part from here down is the rootstock that you use to pro provide the tree with resistance to the nematodes. All right, so let me give you a little summary here of what we've talked about. And remember that this is a low chill peach tree, okay? Peach trees will normally start to produce the flowers in the springtime. And this tree did not produce any flowers at all. Now, it's unusual because being a 100 chill hour tree, the variety called Florida Grand, it should have done that. The times that it doesn't do that is when they're given too much nitrogen fertilizer it's very likely that could happen or not enough chill that could happen too now chill hours are important but there are many other things that can also influence whether or not a fruit tree is going to flower okay stress generally are part of the process so some type of stress not too much stress not too little stress the right little balance between the amount of stress that the tree needs and of course if chill hours are required then chill hours is a factor this particular tree, as I already said, is 100 chill hours and did not produce anything for me in the springtime. And so again, to recap, what I did is I removed the leaves off the tree completely and what happened was, all of a sudden, flower buds that were dormant initiated their growth and started to produce flowers. So we're keeping our fingers crossed because it's October and uh, we're definitely not having any cool weather yet we didn't have any cool weather and uh, I did this back in September remember that your peach tree is going to produce your flowers on the new growth okay it's usually about like a one-year-old growth is when it begins to produce and also keep in mind that you have very small little branches here that you can see the small branches are the ones back here you can see one in the back are the ones that have the flowers so all the larger branches if you look the older wood I guess that's the best way to explain it. The older wood doesn't really have anything going on. So if you're pruning your trees and you excessively prune and don't leave enough 
new growth to develop when the time comes around that you know it's been defoliated or that the weather has changed and it's naturally going into dormancy and then wakes up in the springtime if you don't have a bunch of new growth on the tree that's at least like a year old you're probably not going to get any fruit anyway so be careful with trimming also if you let your tree grow really really big and never prune your tree what's going to happen is you're going to have all the fruit yes on the new growth where way up at the top of the tree so i'm an advocate of growing small fruit trees like many other people they believe in the idea of growing small fruit trees why would you want a tree that's a monster that's huge okay two things happen too much nitrogen because too much wood in the tree less fruit production and if you do have you know a bunch of fruit for some reason then how are you gonna get the fruit you gotta go climb up on a ladder and all that so you know my um, my feeling and many other people's feeling that that grow fruit trees is you know low nitrogen obviously so you don't make them grow big and uh, proper pruning and also maintain your trees compact so after you've harvested your fruit I give it a decent pruning and uh, you should be in great shape. Anyway, listen, thank you. Thank you for stopping by once again. If you liked what you saw here today, give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel, and most of all, leave a comment. Let us know uh, what your thoughts are. Uh, what are you growing? Do you have any peach trees? And remember, this tree is blooming in October, and um, you know, you could probably do the same thing. I'll let you guys know what happens. If I get any fruit, we'll come back, we'll eat it together, and we'll share it with you guys. Peace, everybody. Go out there and grow something, will you? Thank you.